So it's lovely to be here this morning, Liam. Can you tell me how you got involved in the visual arts initially? I was born in a Limerick in a place called Kildimo, uh, West Limerick. And um, I left Kildimo when I was about 17. Um, my father died when I was two, we had a pub. So I worked in the pub when I was younger and then I came to Dublin and I was looking for a job and uh, the Hendricks Gallery in Stevens Green had an ad in the paper for an apprentice picture framer. So I got the job there and I stayed there for about two and a half years and that was the beginning of my, my visual art experience. And in the Hendricks Gallery at that time, he was an artist agent, so exhibitions every month. And the system then was uh, Christmas group show, Easter group show, summer group show, and in between, his artists would have one-man shows, and his stable of artists was probably about 25 or 30 of them, and they included um, George Campbell, Arthur Armstrong, Paddy Collins, Colin Middleton, T.P. Flanagan, um, Kenneth Webb had one exhibition there, uh, Patrick Pye, the one that remains in my mind is Robert Balla. He was a young emerging artist um, that David Hendricks took on. The fact that you're in a building where every month there's a new exhibition and we framed it uh, usually and um, it, um, it was a modern art gallery. The only other gallery, commercial, I'm talking commercial gallery at the time was the Dawson Gallery. In Dublin at the time, and I'm talking about the 70s, um, two commercial galleries mainly. The Brothers, Combridge's, were there, but um, the art scene was based around those two. And was, was it a new initiative by the, um, the Hendricks Gallery to get a framer in? When I joined it, they had three full-time uh, framers. And mainly we just did uh, for the exhibitions or for the, their stable of artists. So there's another artist, say, say Cecil King. Um, he used to travel quite a bit um, with his exhibitions abroad. Uh, I know he had one in Berlin and he had one in Copenhagen, so we would prepare and maybe even, not alone just frame, but we'd, we'd prepare the shipping of, of the exhibition as well. Uh, but yes, the, the, the gallery um, did make a profit from the, the framing end of the, of, of the, um, the business, uh, because sometimes you would have an exhibition where no, nothing would sell. It was a good painter having an exhibition. The Arts Council would buy PJ Carroll and Company. They were a cigarette company. They were collectors, and uh, Basil Goulding was another uh, art collector at the time. Um, so you be always kind of guaranteed three or four sales in the gallery initially. The exhibitions opened Friday afternoon at three o'clock. Back then, wine wasn't served, which it is today. Uh, it was biscuits and tea. There was an artist called Richard Kingston who um, didn't exhibit with the Hendricks Gallery. He, told me that he, uh, he was the first person to serve wine uh, at an exhibition in Dublin. And that was in his own house, uh, Wellington Road. And today, um, just people turn up for the wine. They don't even look at the paintings now. <laughs> Different times. What was Hendrick like? He came to Trinity uh, to study. He was from a well-to-do family. And he, obviously, uh, he opened the art gallery initially in number three St. Stephen's Green. I worked in 119 St. Stephen's Green. So, I think he, he probably started off around 1952 or three. Uh, he was very uh, sophisticated. He wore linen suits when nobody had one. And um, he had a partner, Gordon Lambert. Gordon was an international uh, art man. Um, and Gordon le left his um, collection to uh, Emma up in Kilmeno. So David and Gordon, they, they were forward-looking for the time. In fact, during my period there, uh, a number of the artists left David because uh, he was too modern for them. And uh, another art dealer uh, from Northern Ireland called Tom Caldwell, he had a gallery in Belfast. He opened up uh, a gallery in uh, Fitzwilliam Street Upper. Uh, I think it was number 31, and 
a number of the artists from the Hendrix Gallery moved to Tom Caldwell. Uh, the Northern Irish artists that Hendrix had been representing, which is Middleton and T.P. Flanagan, they now had Caldwell uh, in Dublin. He represented them in Belfast anyway, so they, they stayed with him. And uh, Hendrix lost out from that, but he didn't really bother Hendrix too much because his, his taste had moved on and he became more minimalist. So um, the memory of people coming in, Basil Goulding, Camille Souter came into the gallery. She was with the Dawson Gallery, but she used to come in to view exhibition. Patrick Pye had an exhibition there. It would take a week to hang a show. He was very particular at the height of the painting and the aspect and everything else. I remember very well, Pye arrived then, you know, 20 minutes before the show, his own exhibition opened. And he said, I don't want that painting there, I want it over there. And he swapped everything around. And Anyway, uh, David had a figari and uh, Pye never had an exhibition there after that. And didn't the Hendrix Gallery have an interest in introducing modernism to Dublin they did, to some yeah, extent? And they had a conceptual uh, art exhibition there at one stage. There was a queue Gosh. to see the exhibition. Uh, outside the door, it was a queue to, to, to get in because uh, it generated a lot of publicity, and it was um, it was something that had never been seen in Dublin before, which was yeah, conceptual art. Yeah. You know, it's, I remember one of, the, one of the pieces was just a white canvas, nothing else on it, just painted white, and there was another uh, piece. Um, it was just a statement saying this space is reserved for Salvo, I think he was, a, he was a Italian artist. So what Salvo had done was he'd reserved a space within the universe and he gave the dimensions and that particular space he had transported it from Italy to Ireland. But it was nothing, it was just a little, this space is reserved for Salvo. But that gained a lot of publicity, uh, that kind of uh, stuff. So. Did anything sell? No. Just well, it was for sale, but nobody yeah. was buying. And I do remember, and years later, I was um, uh, in a house in Aylesbury Road, in a, uh, which, did, did, which David Hendricks had connections. And at, at the back of the house, in, in the stable, a lot of that exhibition was just dumped there because it was too expensive to ship it back again. Art can be a pollutant as well. It can be, you know, people create things and there's no, you know, it, 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 um, it just becomes pollution. This stuff was lying in the, in, in the back of um, the stable yard and eventually it would go into a skip. So, um, from being the talk of the town to the skip in a number of years.